Welcome to Philippines Discovery. Today we are going to discover the central island groups known as Visayas in this island nation of the Philippines. Lisa here, your honorary Filipina. Let's take a tour of these six land masses. They're broken up into Western Visayas, Eastern Visayas, and Central Visayas. Mountainous patchworks of farms and jungles make up the island interiors. Some of the country's most fabled beaches occur in the Visayas Islands. The Visayas Islands are known for its marine life and spectacular beaches. Here we have a panoramic view of the San Juanico Bridge, the longest bridge in the country. It connects the island of Samar and Leyte Islands in the Visayas region. The most popular Visayan island is Tiny Boracay. It is known for its pristine coastlines. This island is very popular with divers and snorkelers. These group of islands, which are located between Luzon, the largest island in the Philippines, and Mindanao, they really give you calm waters, shimmering coves, and palm fringe beaches. They have interesting tourist attractions like Willie's Rock on Boracay and Paradise Lagoon. Beautiful spots. You can find some very quiet tourist resorts. One such popular resort is the White Beach Resort. Seafood is inevitably fresh in this region, dominated economically by halls from under the ocean. If you love architecture, you can visit old churches and buildings. Next, let's go over to Bohol. Alona Beach is very popular, one of the best dive sites in the world because of the marine life and coral reefs. On the coast of Bohol, you can find some very comfortable resort spots with sandy beaches decked out in tropical flora. Cebu Island, the usual entry point to central Visayas is Cebu City. From here, you can take a plane and hop to the capital cities of neighboring islands, board fast ferries to some destinations, or travel by slow boats to others. The Philippines' third largest city is Cebu City. It fans out past historic Fort San Pedro through several nightlife districts to Mactan Island. You can visit some Cebu temples. Again, if you like architecture, you can certainly visit the Cebu Metropolitan Cathedral in Cebu City. In 1937, Fort San Pedro became the quarters for the Philippine Army. The barracks was eventually removed and the fort turned into a promenade area popular in the early evening hours today. Tourists also love to visit the refreshing Kawasan Falls. Cebu has become a model for tourism development with its deep water port and growing international airport. The city and the province of the same name are magnets for investment, both Filipino and foreign. A large wooden crucifix that was left by Magellan in 1521 
commemorates the Philippines' first encounter with the West. It's Cebu's most important historical landmark. The Chocolate Hills remains Bohol's most famous attraction. It's called the Chocolate Hills because in the summer, the grass cover turns dry and brown. The two large islands of Samar and Lete are best known for their brutal battles of World War II. But these two islands cradle some of the country's luscious forests and pristine shores, offering ample opportunities for action sports, historical tours, and scenic leisure strolls. Locals live largely off rice and coconut farming with the usual Philippine staple of fish. There are venues that do abound for rock climbing, trekking, surfing, and hiking, and of course, water sports like kite surfing. But keep in mind the eastern part of the Visayas Islands is the least prosperous and the least developed for tourism. While you can find an array of lodging, you can also find cozy native huts and cottages that are also available. See you next time on Philippines Discovery.